Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to Best of Designers. Today we're taking a look at the designer Friedman Fries. Now Friedman Fries is known for, well, his designing of games, but he's also known for a color, green. It's almost as if he owns this color. Uh, he is, his hair is a bright shade of green if you meet him. His company, all his games are green. His company 2F, his name, Friedman Fries. Most of the games that he has done have 2Fs in them, Fearsome Floors, even... Uh, Power Grid, one of his more popular games was Funkenschlag, something uh, when he first came out with it. He is almost a mad designer of games. When you meet him, he seems like he's constantly tinkering on his games and he's looking there and he tries things that no one else has done. And so today I'm going to be talking about my 10 favorite games from Mr. Friedman Fries. Here we go. Number 10 is 504. Now, while this game, I'm not as enamored with it as the other ones on this list, you got to give this game points for effort, for sure. 504, what he did was he created a game that had nine modules, and you put these modules in order. So you get a module six, then three, then four. And if you have these three modules plugged in, that made a different game with four, 504 different games. Now, obviously, when you do something like this, you're going to get some games that are not that fantastic, but some of, the, some of them were pretty good, and the whole thing worked. I didn't find any game that did not work, and it's just an amazing experiment, which is unbelievable how much effort went into it. Uh, so number 10, 504. Number 9, Black Friday. This is his stock market game that he did. It's actually a pretty hefty stock market game where you're moving the stock prices around and buying and selling and trying to figure out the right time. I mean... It's not really, there's not anything especially new involved with this one, but it's a good game. Number eight is Fabled Fruit. This is his game which introduced the Fable system. The Fable system essentially is when you're done with the game, it's going to change the, the setup for the next game. And so you can keep playing over and over, but each game is going to change. In this one, you are collecting potions and you're using fruit to do so. And the different cards that you have available to buy that give you special actions are going to change from game to game. And the expansion adds even more of that involved in it. This is the first of a series of games. I'm sure we'll see more than possibly even one this year. Number seven is Fearsome Floors. This is, I think, the first game of his that I ever played, and it really left a profound effect on, on me. This is a game in which you are trapped in a basement with a gigantic monster who's chasing you. So is everybody else. You have different characters, and you're all running. You're trying to get to the exit. But this monster's running around and just chopping on people when he catches them. Kind of think a silly Frankenstein-type monster. And... The monster moves in a programmable way, and so you're all scattering and hoping he sees someone else and then heads towards them. It is really fun, and it's one of the few games that plays up to seven players. Number six is Felix the Cat in a Sack, or though the recent edition of it is Felicity Cat in a Sack. And in this game, you are basically bidding or trying to take cards from this sack in the middle. Some will give you points, some don't give you points, but you're only revealing them one at a time. And so when you see one card, are you going to stay in or jump out? It is a lot of fun, and it's kind of a fun party-style card-collecting game. Number five is Fast Forward Fortress. Now, he made three games in the Fast Forward line, and I'm sure we'll see more of them. Fast Forward is a kind of a variation on the Fable system, where you have a deck of cards, and it's in a very specific order. You flip over the top card, and it tells you the rules of the game. You then take, draw some more cards, you play the game, and at the end of the game, you might draw a few more cards from the deck, and rules are going to change. And Fortress, without spoiling it too much, Fortress is a game in which you are trying to control fortresses by playing cards and taking them from other players, although it gets different and unusual as the game goes by. And I played through the entire game twice and would do it again, so therefore I know it's a good game. Number four uh, is America. Well, maybe Fauna. We'll say Fauna is number four. And you say, why? Because number three is America. So these two are kind of conjoined together, and there's also Terra in the mix here. Fauna is a game of wildlife trivia. And you're like, what? Trivia? Well, that's because in this game you'd get an animal, maybe, let's just say, the, the lion. And then you are bidding on where in the world you think the lion lives. And you have a big map and you can put things, uh, a cube on where you think it lives, how much you think it weighs, how long do you think its tail is, different stats on it. And then you get points if you are correct, but you also get points if you're close to being correct. So someone else, I'm like, I think they know the answer. I'm going to go close to them. And then, so this was a good game. That's why I say Fauna is number four. Terra followed up on that by doing other things. And America kind of, with Ted Osbach, 
really took the system to its best height. That's my number three. America, because it asked all kinds of interesting questions, and you could get points by basically saying everyone else is dead wrong. All right, so that's four and three. We're now at number two. It's another fast-forward game, and this is Fast Forward Fear. I like the Fast Forward series. Like I said, I think it's an interesting series. This, The Fear one is essentially almost Uno-ish in style. You're playing cards down, trying not to go over a specific number. But at the new cards that come in, the rules keep changing, and I just enjoyed it. It's just a joy to play through Fear. It's really light, but it's a lot of fun. And then my favorite game from him, and this is one of the few times where I, my favorite game from Mr. Friedman Fries is the same as the public's is, and that's Power Grid. I mean, originally Funk and Schlag, a game where you were drawing roots on a board, Power Grid, a fairly hefty economic game. A lot going on in this game where you are bidding on power plants and then using those power plants to power things, buying the resources you need. There is a lot of number crunching in this game. There is about... I don't know, 20 different maps for the game of different countries with different rules for each one. It's it's a game that's pretty long with six players, although I've enjoyed it with six players. It goes down to three. There's a lot of good things to say about this game, and one is the, the best is that it's really stood the test of time. I still see people playing Power Grid today, and it's been out for a decade or so. A great game and my favorite of his. There's lots of games I've missed, though. Some of his games have some biting humor in them. Some games he has are, he does trick take, he does all kinds of things, and he's always trying new things. That's the Fable System, 504, etc. What are your favorite games of Mr. Friedman Freeze? Let me know in the comments. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. This has been Designer's Best, Friedman Freeze.